It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. Are you middle-aged or approaching middle age and believe that you're past your prime and that it's all downhill from here? Today's guest, fashion designer Diane Gilman, says it's time to embrace a new way of thinking. Diane's DG2 brand is the Home Shopping Network's number one fashion selling product. It was in her 60s when Diane's life became everything she dreamt it would be. But it wasn't always that way for Diane. Like so many women entering the second half of their life, Diane was overweight, newly widowed, and struggled with how society defined her. She's here today to help us learn how to experience a spiritually, physically, and professionally rewarding act too. Diane is the author of Good Genes, 10 Simple Truths About Feeling Great, Staying Sexy, and Aging Agelessly. Welcome, Diane. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Diane, I love your story. I absolutely love it. My chapter two began at age 46. So I love everything that you're doing, and, and you are just my new hero. So thank you thank for you. being here. Thank you. And, you know, I think that um, because I'm not a true Hollywood celebrity, I can actually be very honest about my age, about how I age, and how I actually was able to turn that Titanic of aging around, fight against ageism, and create a whole new me that I loved a lot more than I liked myself in my 20s, 30s, or 40s. You are constantly bumping up against that great wall of ageism, which tells you that you should go gently into that good night and just sort of fade away. And I just never bought into any of it. But Mm -hmm. because I had a husband who was sick with cancer and eventually lost that battle, and I wound up in my early 50s alone and sort of adrift and and gained uh, 60, 70 pounds and I finally just looked in the mirror, I tried to avoid it, and I thought, who is this stranger looking back at me? Mm-hmm. Whoever this stranger is, I don't want to know her. But I did have to come to grips with that, and um, I had to turn a good part of my life around. And and uh, I would say that my number one thought was I never bought in to the theory that Aging was such a precipitous decline. I thought, no, there must be ways of dealing with this. So truly, I learned to negotiate aging. And I think you just hit the nail on the head because we all hit those roadblocks that you just described. And many people use those roadblocks as an excuse to take to their chair and just wait to retire and die or whatever they're waiting for. But you've made the conscious choice to say, that's not for me. And look at what you've accomplished. Uh, It's amazing. You know, if I had given up and I had said, well, come on, let's take a look at society today. There's, I'm in a youth-obsessed industry. Two of them, actually, not only fashion, but, but television. And there's no way that the pinnacle of my career, that the peak of my image, that the joys that I've experienced in life are going to be heightened and multiplied in my 60s unheard of. Let's talk a little bit about your early years. You were the fashion it girl. I mean, you lived that life of the Studio 54 and the celebrities. What during that time period, if anything, prepared you for what you're doing now? Absolutely nothing. (laughs) I mean, that was a youth obsessed. That was also completely youth obsessed. And that really and truly was about pushing your body to the limits. I mean, you were out every night dancing until 4 a.m. I'd go home, I'd get one hour of sleep, take a shower and be at work at 8 a.m. Do the same thing the next night and the next night. So nothing, I don't think there is anything 
that can prepare you for the changes you're going to go through physically, psychologically, emotionally, um, mentally as you start to make your way into middle age. Diane, you mentioned you lost your husband to cancer and that was at middle age, age 50. And there are so many people that are finding themselves alone, whether through death or divorce. And how did that experience prepare you? How did that catapult you onto your new journey? It only catapulted me onto my new journey from this point of view. Um, I was not the merry widow type that was going to go out and find somebody else immediately. I really felt I lost the love of my life and the companion of a lifetime. And I went into a very deep depression. I went into a real dark cave and I honestly made carbohydrates my boyfriend, my social life, everything. And I ate my way up 60 pounds. And then I really never wanted even a full-length mirror in my house. And then finally, uh, a doctor turned around and said, I hope you understand the self-destructive path you're on. And even if you don't care and you want to go on eating, I want to tell you what's going to happen. Overweight is going to kill your joints. You're going to have diabetes. It's going to blah, blah, blah. And I already noticed a lot of changes in my body beyond the weight and all kinds of things that I didn't like. So I sat, sat down and thought to myself, you know, my whole family lives to be 98 or 100. Do I really want another 50 years of this? And the answer was a resounding no. And then the question that formed in my mind was, okay, what are you going to do about it? So I sat down and I made a list and I listed, what do you like about your life right now? Trust me, that was a short list. Then I listed, what don't you like about your life? And then I thought, one more list. What can you do about it? And when I put it all on paper, which I realized that a lot of what I didn't like, all of that came right back to being 60, 70 pounds overweight. So I decided that uh, the I don't like myself list was so overwhelming, it was better to just really attack one thing that I felt was foundational and pivotal. So I, I set about losing that weight. And when I did, so many things in my life fell into place. So Diane, you were becoming mentally ready to embark on this new life. And when you went out with your, your company and, and your new product line, you were basically told that it's all over for you. You know, this is for the young kids. You're, you shouldn't be doing this. You should be looking forward to retirement. How did you combat that? You're ready, but the world isn't ready. How did you fight that? You know, the amazing thing was that when I had the idea, when I designed the first CG2 gene for myself with a new middle-aged body, and I read up biologically everything is females that happens to us as we age, I trotted that idea around to every major gene maker in the fashion industry, and here is the conclusion. One of the executives, male executives, said, now, who would want an oversized gene for fat old chicks? <laughs> that kind of summed it all up, and I thought, yeah. I would. <laughs> I, want a, I want a gene, and, you know, I designed it. I wore it. It changed my life, and I thought it could change millions of women's lives. So as I started to embark into my 60s, and they became the best years of my life, I thought again, just like the gene, if this could happen to me, if I could reverse the whole attitude and trend of aging and basically ignore the entire attitude of ageism in our society and I could get enough women on board with that, we could turn the whole view of aging as females around to something so much more positive, so much more fulfilling, so much more beautiful and touching. Diane, in our remaining moments, I'd like to talk to you about your secrets to feeling great and aging well. What are the things that you've learned that you'd like to share with us? I think the biggest secret is that if you stop thinking of yourself as a certain age and you stop fearing it, so will everybody around you. You know, I wear my jeans. I love them. I love them tight. I love them sexy. And I'll see younger women and younger men checking me out and trying to figure out, like, how old is she? <laughs> and then they kind of just give up and decide, yeah, I like the way she looks. I like the message she has. I like her energy level. So my advice is 
don't lock yourself in that physical age box. I never use age as an excuse. I never talk about chronological age. I talk about my spirit and keeping your spirit continually young. And if you stop thinking and putting yourself in an age box, trust me, everybody around you will stop as well. And you'll find people treating you as more energetic, younger spirit, as more contemporary, as more relevant. And you know something? It is completely your blank canvas to paint your picture on. Diane, in about 30 seconds or less, what would be your advice to someone who really wants to begin a new business or follow a dream in midlife? What would you say to that person? Don't buy in to ageism. Just just ignore it and know that you can peak in any decade of your life. And I'm just going to give these very brief examples. Coco Chanel, do you know that she didn't design the Chanel suit until she was 72 years old? Colonel Sanders didn't invent Kentucky Colonel Fried Chicken until he was 69 years old. Mary Kay started a cosmetic dynasty when she was well into, I think she was in her late 50s, early 60s. So just follow your dream. Believe in yourself and remain open and eager and ready for opportunity. Diane, thank you so much for joining us today. As I said in the beginning, you are my new hero. This, what I'm doing right now, began at age 46. This is the second half of my life. So you're a wonderful example that as we get older, it's time to refire and not retire. So thank you so much for being here. (laughs) Thank you so much. My privilege and my pleasure. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Joan Herman, host of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Did you know that Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life has a free monthly digital magazine that can be read online or emailed to your inbox? Every month, nationally recognized leaders in their field provide information to educate, inspire, and motivate you. We believe in a holistic approach to life, incorporating mind, body, and spirit. Check out a copy of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life 24-7. Visit CYACYL.com and be sure to tell your friends. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read our digital magazine, take part in the book club, check out our team, and be sure to follow the show on social media. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.